Jane Margolis and I'm senior researcher here at UCLA and my work is really focused on how different fields become segregated and how inequality in this country gets produced and gets reproduced. And I use computer science education as a window into understanding how this happens. Uh, I began looking at this question actually in 1994. Um, I had just gotten my PhD in education and I was um, from a women's studies background, not a computer science background. And I was asked by the Dean of Carnegie Mellon University, one of the top computer science departments in the country, to help him figure out why there were so few women studying computer science. And at that time, um, there was only 7% women um, studying at Carnegie Mellon. And so we did a four-year research project interviewing um, 100 students over a four-year time, following them from freshman to senior year. And we investigated all of the different issues that were affecting them, the, the culture, um, the, the, the norms of what it meant to be a computer scientist. And by the end of the four-year time, uh, there was a rise of 7% to 42% because the administration actually adopted some of the recommendations that we did. But what I discovered in that process was how few st students of color um, were involved in computer science and studying computer science. So I committed myself to looking at this issue. I came to Los Angeles, got an NSF um, grant to do a research project on why so few African American, Latinos, and females were learning computer science. And we did an intensive research project in, uh, in the district, which is the second largest school district in the country. And we interviewed students, teachers, counselors. We did classroom observations. And what we found was an incredible disparity um, of access to learning opportunities. Um, if you were in a predominantly a uh, white school in a white wealthy part of Los Angeles, you had a full range of learning about computer science and computing. If you were in a school, which are most of the schools in Los Angeles that have African American and Latino students, um, mostly in underserved communities, um, which we were concerned about. In those schools, what was considered computer science were just typing classes, keyboarding, internet searching. There was none of the critical thinking, the logical thinking um, that goes into really being a computer science. There was, um, it was just the most rudimentary skills and nothing more. And there were no, uh, compute, there were very few computer science teachers. Um, and there was a belief system in these schools that, um, that the students, the African American and Latino students and the females were just not interested or able. And what we found was not only were there structural inequalities, the lack of classes, then the lack of teachers, um, and I want to make a, a side note on this, that many of the schools were filled with technology and we call them technology rich but curriculum poor. Um, but there were also belief systems and many of the educators felt that they knew who was going to be good at computer science and that, no, that stereotype was a white or male student who many people thought were just had an innate talent, were just born to do it. You could tell that they were the ones that were going to be successful. And that was very much the image of the Steve Jobs and the Bill Gates. And what we discovered in our research was that um, it's really a question of what we call preparatory privilege. There were the kids that had the robotics kits under their Christmas tree that went to computer camp. Um, that had parents at home that could really introduce them into computer science. And then they came into school 
And then everyone thought that they, who were mostly white or Asian males, were just the naturals. They were the ones that were really capable and interested. And all the other students who did not have this preparatory privilege were just not capable and able. And what happened was that kind of belief system then affected the courses that were being offered or not offered. Um, in the in these underserved schools and so principals would cancel any computer science classes because they would just assume that their kids were not interested or able and what we found was when given the opportunity um, that that was totally not the case and how we were able to give the opportunity was from our research findings we decided that we had to do something. We were not going to let research sit on the shelf. We were going to take action and we formed a partnership with LAUSD, the school district, and we formed a course exploring computer science that was committed to introducing this subject in a very relevant way to kids that would contextualize the learning in issues that were important for kids' lives. And um, we would take this to the most underserved schools and we were committed to bringing these opportunities to all students. The course has now, it's in about 30 schools in Los Angeles and has become a national um, uh, model program supported by the National Science Foundation. It's in Chicago, New York, all of seven of the largest school districts. And our commitment is, um, we are driven by the equity um, mission. So, like I said, I'm a social scientist. I use computer science as, as a window. Um, the numbers uh, of who is studying computer science is shameful if you look at all the way to PhDs and also who is in industry and who gets hired by industry. And so our project is we are committed to um, integrating this field and giving opportunities to all students and make it engaging and relevant. And um, you, the, the book that we're, which talks about all of this research is called Stuck in the Shallow End, Education, Race, and Computing. And just to sort of I'll wrap up with um, talking about why the title Stuck in the Shallow End, because it's really important. Um, when we were doing research and analyzing all our data, we came across a statistic from the um, CDC that said that African American kids drowned three times more than white kids. And um, I, must, I happen to be a swimmer. I was appalled. I did not know that statistic. And we kind of stopped everything we were doing and we started investigating why this was the case. And it turns out that um, this statistic uh, in, in today's life goes all the way back to, um, to the pre-civil rights legislation, to the segregation that happened in this country where people of color were not allowed in public swimming pools, they were not allowed on beaches, there was white um, protests to let them swim um, in public places, there were belief systems that were perpetuated, um, that people of color had uh, bigger bones and they were sinkers, and there was a lot of fear around the question of swimming, and also swimming, um, swimming access is different in different communities. So if you look at Beverly Hills and you're, you're looking down, there's swimming pools everywhere. And if you go to South LA or East LA, there are not the same opportunities for swimming. And so all of these factors um, play out in the segregation of swimming. And they were factors that were very similar to what plays out into the um, segregation in computer science. So we are um, committed to using this issue and campaigning for computer science for all as an example of how we have to continue um, to fight the racial and gender discrimination that happens all across our country.